nobody like Jesus. And no one can ever claim that they could do anything, anything like God can do. Amen. His mercy endures forever. We've been studying about seeking the kingdom of God by faith. And it has been some one manifestation after another. It has been one manifestation after another. I really, 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 really need everybody to be at church on Sunday because we're going to make a display of some of the blessings of God on Sunday. And it's, it's amazing how, how right on target God is. It's amazing how, how, he, how He's Jehovah Shammah. Jehovah Shammah means the right now God. Everybody likes that now. You know, you, we teach faith, we teach patience. You, I waited patient for the Lord, but most people like right now God. Because <laughs> there's sometimes you can't afford to be patient. You need Him right now. Now, there's been some situations in my life where I had needed God, where I needed things from God. I didn't know how to approach God for it. I didn't know, you know, oh, well, uh, how long am I going to have to wait for this thing? And, um, did, did I ask right? And, but there's ways in the Word of God you can know for absolutely sure that you got exactly what you asked for, and it's exactly on its way, and you can rest in that. And sometimes that can be trying times. That can be, that can be times that you just have to stand and say, well, you know what? I know it's here. I know I got it. So all this stuff going on really don't mean nothing. Because the enemy will always like to put on a show and kick up sand and, and make a parade go by you. you know. But in my hometown of North Carolina, you know what happened at the end of every Thanksgiving parade? Santa Claus be there. <laughs> so, so, you know, just let the parade go by. And all of the bells and the whistles and the clowns and all of the people of different bands competing and everything like go trying to get your attention. I just said, okay, that's okay. Santa Claus is coming by last. <laughs> so then everybody know the Christmas season is here. Okay, so that's what we're doing at LOGCC. We learned something last week that brought us up another level up in here. I'm telling you, it brought me to a level in my walk with the Lord. I have not been since I started walking with Him on a consistent basis since 1985. Sound like a long time ago, since 2019. <laughs> but I'm telling you, it's brought me up that much higher. It's no strain to believe God no more. Before you, I had to keep my mind centered and quote the word and, and study the word and get full of faith in the morning and stuff like that and, and, and hear all the time. You know what? It's no struggle no more. Amen. Thank you. Jesus. I make sure that I'm having a steady diet of the word. I make sure, don't, I'm not going to make that mistake. Mm -hmm. I need faith in my heart like you need food in your system. Mm -hmm. Okay, like you need air in your lungs. You need that word all the time. Yes, amen. And the Lord showed us on Sunday that we need faith in three places. Yes. In our eyes, in our ears, and in our heart. Yes, amen. And we're going to get to that, but I'm really led to start off with the importance of the Word of God in, in a dimension, as far as I'm concerned, is one of the most concentrated places in the Bible where it talks about the importance of the Word. That's Psalm 119, if you could turn over there. Psalm 119, and it is a place, my God, my God, my God, it is so amazing. It is so amazing how 119 just highlights the importance of the word. Psalm 119 is assumed by, by many to be written by David, but they don't really know. They're not really sure. If you look, there's no designation assigned to it like it says a psalm of David or a psalm of Asaph or a psalm for the Sabbath or a psalm for this or a psalm for that you know most of them we can see are written by David a good many of them but in 119 they don't know who wrote it my suspicion is that it is, it is David that's my suspicion in it because the Bible said he's a man after God's own heart so if he's a man after God's own heart he'd have to be a man of the word mm -hmm. 
So then he, in Psalm 119, the writer is highlighting the importance of the word and the results of walking in the word. I never forget when I discovered this back in the, in the mid 80s. I said, my God, how up to date that is of what they're teaching. But guess where they got it from? Hello? From the word. Look at Psalm 119 verse 1. It says, blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. They see the value of it. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. How did he do it? Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Mm -hmm. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Mm -hmm. Bless art thou, O Lord, teach me your statutes. With my lips have I declared all your righteous, the righteous judgments of my mouth. I rejoice in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I meditate in your precepts and have respect unto your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Wow. He said, De deal bountifully with your servant. That I may live and keep your word. Open my eyes that I might behold wondrous things out of thy law. In other words, I'm beholding it. But God, I know you got more. I want to behold wondrous things. I know this thing is a lie. So you got to show me, open the eyes of my understanding like the Apostle Paul said. That, open, that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know the hope of his calling. This is, this is not something new. This is not just New Testament. He says, I am a stranger in the earth. Hide not your commandments from me. In other words, he's begging to see something deeper. He said, I know there's something there, so don't hide it from me. He said, I, my soul breaketh for the longing that it has under your judgments at all times. You have rebuked the proud that are cursed, which are erred from thy commandments. Remove from me reproach and contempt, for I have kept your testimonies. Princes also did sit and speak against me, but your servant did meditate in, my, in your statutes. Thy testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. Oh my God, my God. Now we're talking about something that's alive. He says, your testimonies are my delight, but also they do one other thing. They give me counsel. They speak to me deeper things than just what's on the surface, and I can hide and hang my life on it and direct my life accordingly. And they work every time. They are my delight and my counselors. And my counselors. I love that. They are. Okay, what verse was that in? 25. Now. 25, thanks. And I, I have been 26 now. We get 25. My soul cleaveth unto the dust, quicken me according to your word. In other words, he's asking everything of God to be directed according to his word. Make me unto understand the way of your precepts. So shall I talk of your wondrous works. My soul melted for heaven and strengthen thou me according to your word. Remove from me the way of lying and grant me thy law graciously. I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before, you, have I laid before me. I have stuck unto thy testimonies, O Lord. Put me not to shame. I run the way of your commandments. When you shall enlarge my heart. I teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep them unto the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. I like what Dr. Ken Stewart said. He told Pastor Sarah and Pastor Clinton. The part of the word of God you understand is the part that you obey. 
That's what just that just got finished saying. Give me understanding and I shall keep your law. Yeah, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Don't give me something that I just got to obey from a cranial mental standpoint. Give me understanding that I can put my whole heart into it. That's how I know it's David. Mm -hmm. He's the guy that ran down the street dancing naked when they're bringing the covenant home. He says, no, I don't want to keep this thing just a matter of precept or a matter of statute that we bow down and we obey because we think it's a holy thing. He said, I want to keep this dude with my whole heart. It's all or nothing with him. Yeah. Okay? Make me to go in the paths of your, com the, the, your commandments, for therein do I delight. Now, we got to park right there a little bit. Because he says, I, it's my delight. Mm -hmm. It's the thing that I gravitate to more than anything else. It's the thing that I have full assurance, and it is the heartbeat of my life. He says, it's my delight. And he's the one that wrote the psalm that says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. He knew what it was to break through, delight himself so much in God that the blessings begin to overflow and overtake him. And he understood that that was because he was delighting in God. Amen. Do you hear what he's saying? He's saying here that he delight himself in God so much. You ain't got to be hollering and screaming and crying and praying so hard. If you take that same time and delight yourself in the Lord, man, your prayer life gets small in a hurry. Amen. Your intercession will be for folks who don't do it. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Then it gets to the point where you are all consumed in Him. And that's His desire. Mm -hmm. That's His desire. Even in the Old Testament. That you are consumed in him. He talked about the ordinance of worship. He talked about the the the, the, labor, the, the brazen the, the, the altar and, and the incense and in the holiest of holies. He talked about people with, with, with the high priest with the sacrifices. He wanted everything that were that they did to be consumed up in him. Mm -hmm. And so that's not changed. Amen. That has seriously not changed. So what did he do? He, that wasn't enough for the feasts and all of the Sabbaths and the Holy Sabbaths and all of the, 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 the different holidays they, they, they had and the Passover feast. All the ordinances and worship and commandments, it wasn't enough for him. He said, well, now in the New Testament, I'm going to come and live on the inside of you. Amen, 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 amen. So it's been his desire. If you look back, when he walked and talked, praise the Lord, when he walked and talked with Adam in the cool of the day, it was what you call, it was what you call, if you will, a type and shadow of what he really desired for it to happen. Amen, amen. He desired from the beginning. Now see, there was no sin with Adam. Mm -hmm. There was no sin with Adam. So he could afford to walk and talk with him. And he could afford to, to, to go in because all the thoughts are pure. Mm -hmm. nobody, nobody, you know, had a bad thought back then. You know, I mean, they said in heaven, all your thoughts are pure. And you know what the other person is thinking. And they don't have to use words. Even in the book of Corinthians, it said, we will know even as we are known. Yeah. Somebody said, but that would be a pitiful situation in the earth. <laughs> It better off you don't know what some folks thinking. Okay? You'd be better off up in here, you know? But see, everything is pure up there. Yes. Okay? Everything is right up there. And that's why we renew our minds and we bring every thought into captivity. Because we can identify what thoughts are from us and what, what thoughts are not from God. Mm -hmm. We know that. But you see, it, and even there's another manifestation. Another manifestation of God. The other manifestation of God is that. He not only wants to commune with you in your heart, in your, in, in, in your prayer, but also He wants your thoughts pure. He, that's why He says renew your mind. Mm -hmm. He wants, you talk about being possessed. You want to be possessed by, God wants you to possess, possess you and you possess Him. Mm -hmm. That's been His thing altogether. And that's what this whole psalm is about, about, about the Word and about the importance of the Word. If you got issues, if you got challenges, man, step up your game in the word. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
Step up your game. Spend more time in it. Spend more time in prayer. Start sowing to the Spirit. Amen. It's got the power to change some stuff up in here. I can tell you. I can tell you. Because the Lord directed us to start some outreaches, man, when we were going through some stuff. I told you last week about how we, we, we went through that heavyweight for that. And just, just so y'all know it, and I just want to tell us, everybody, this is the anniversary of last year when we had to borrow money from the church just to pay the mortgage. We were about to go in foreclosure. Y'all didn't know that, did you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were just about to go in foreclosure. If we missed one more payment, we'd have been there. Okay? But I said, no, 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 no. We, we, we're not, we don't roll like that. So the, the board is gracious enough, and we just paid the last payment off last month, the last $50. Hallelujah. <laughs> Every dime. And then, with not only that, we got great grace, we got favor with the bank, and they took care of all the back payments. Amen. Wow. And this month, we ain't got to pay no mortgage. <laughs> okay, and that, and then the income went up about eighty percent. You know, and but I'm telling you, but it was because we knuckled down in the worst. Say, this ain't reality. Mm-hmm. This ain't the will of God for us. Amen. Amen. Oh, you didn't you, you you didn't see a lot of the things, the strength that was going on the inside of me. And, and and I thank God because when you go through like that, it makes you come to that level. And if you're smart, you stay to that level. Amen. That's true. I'm go high. You won't say, well, well, it's all right now. Yeah. Yeah, the pressure's off now. Yeah, I, I can chill. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I went to, them tapes I was listening to then, I put them on my phone. <laughs> I jerked them babies in my ear and all during the, during the day. No, no, every day I listen to it once, maybe twice. Today I listen to it about three or four times. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you want to fight? Okay, well, you know. Now, see, it's okay when you when you hit me in the face and making me look bad for everybody. But when I start to win, you want me to back off you? Uh, uh-uh, uh, no. See, see, I'm telling you something about how Lord had to had to save Pastor Archie. Okay, <laughs> there used to be bullies in my hometown in North Carolina, and they used to come and want to jump in my chest. I was a little skinny, but I was stronger than I looked. And so when the guy jumped on me for nothing and I didn't do nothing for him, and we got the box and everything, I figured out that I could beat this guy. I said, "You mind now?" And I'd whip him and whip him and whip him. And when he got down, I'd still keep whipping him. I wouldn't, I, it wasn't enough for me to win. I had to whip him until I was satisfied. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, 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 he didn't know, but people had to pull me off this one guy. When they would pull me off, I'm, I'm stomping him on the way out. You know? No, see, that's the way I fight. Okay, but I got that out of natural into the spirit now. Okay? So we got the devil whipped over that situation. But you think I'm going to let up? No. No, 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 no. He made us hurt. We going to hurt him some more now. Mm-hmm. Now it's our turn. Amen. You're going to talk Amen. about kicking when he down. I'm good at that. <laughs> like, what, now see, now before y'all start criticizing Pastor Archie, you look in the New Testament when Jesus triumphed over them, made a show of them openly, said, I got one. I got him. I got a demon in every hand banging their heads together. Okay? He made a show of them openly. Yes. Well, you ought to make him sorry he ever, t- he ever messed with you. That's the truth. You got to make him sorry. He ever- mm-hmm. You got to say, no, there's a toll gate when you come in here. Mm-hmm. You're going you're gonna to mess with me, you're going to be a testimony, and I'm going to get testimonies from a lot of other folks going through too. They're going to come out with a testimony too. Amen. Yeah, he, he wanted to take my first wife out. Yeah. And we, 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 during that time, we did outreaches from my home. Okay, so she, she, she won part of the battle, and then all of a sudden went down, and the cancer took her out and everything like that. But look what, what's happening now. We start outreaches in other churches now. <laughs> mm-hmm. we, we start outreaches all over the place now. Mm-hmm. Got a call today. Got another one coming up in Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah, got another pastor over there needs help and everything. He, I, well, I said, he said, well, well, the only thing about it, he said, the money part is the hard part. I said, that's where I come in. <laughs> I said, I'm going to, we're coming down. We ain't going to charge you a dime. We're going to bring the whole outreach plan to you. We're going to show you how to set it up. We're going to show you how to get up to $40,000 for the next few years. We're going to show you how to earn money. So you don't even have to spend that money to be able to do outreaches so that money gets to the point where you just use out of it and never have to use it all. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love to fight when I'm winning. I love to sh- I mean, you know, you talk about kicking him when he's down. He ain't seen nothing yet. 
He ain't said, now all that did, but the, 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 when I got to the, y'all heard me say it at the comfort them. Y'all don't want to know me when I ain't got nothing to lose. And we were there when I didn't have nothing to lose. A couple of times when you guys helped us out and tell you this, we were going to lose the car too. If it didn't happen when it happened, we'd have been walking. But God came through. Oh, but that, but see now, every time I kick him, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm remind him of that. You remember when you did this to me? You remember when you did that to me? Uh-huh. Uh huh. Newburgh, they, they, they're out in the street now. They out reaches out in the street. They're on Facebook. Talk, giving out turkeys, doing this and getting ready to put on this big block party. Got the mayor involved. In you know why? Because I went down there about three or four, three straight Saturdays, began to give an outreach strategy. They got excited about the word and the promises that was going to come forth from the word. Man, before we got finished, that outreach co community in that church was about eight or ten strong. By the time we got finished in the third service out there, the place was half full. Everybody got, in, got involved. The woman in charge of Irish, she said, Pastor Archie, she said, this one woman, she would never do nothing. And she volunteering all over the place now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going to kick him hard. We ain't got started good yet. Yeah, he messed with the wrong one. He messed with the wrong one. Cause, uh, so we, we're going to go forward on it. We're going to go forward. But anyway, all right. Anyway, glory to God. <laughs> but see, God is good. Where, where are we, Darren? Where are we stop? We are on. He's a good mark, man. <laughs> okay. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, we went to 35. You're right. 35. Make me to go in the path of your commandments, for therein do I delight. Exact that, Darren. Incline my heart unto your testimonies, not to covetousness. Turn away my eyes from beholding vanity. Quicken me in your way. Establish your word unto your servant who is devoted to your fear. Turn away my reproach, which I fear for your judgments are good. Behold, I have longed after your precepts. Quicken me in your righteousness. Let your, your mercies come also unto me, O Lord, even thy salvation according to thy word. So shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproaches me, for I trust in your word. And take not away the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for I have hoped in your judgments. So shall I keep your law continually forever and ever, and I will walk at liberty, for I seek your precepts. Oh, my God. Did you hear what he just said? <laughs> he said, I'm going to walk free of everything bugging me because I sought your word. So that tells me that word has the power to deliver you when you seek it. Amen. Oh, I got to park right there. Mm -hmm. I was wondering where the road was going to split up to bring us back to where we were. The Lord laid it on my heart uh, and to repeat the message on Sunday. Cannot miss it. This church has to have that message. It brought us to a new level. A new level of being easy walking by faith. When you walk by faith after tonight, you're going to say, my God, my God, I never knew it was that easy. I never knew it was that matter of fact. Now you think about this thing. The ground has to be level at the cross. It has, it has to be enough for everybody to partake about it. Partake of it. it can't be something that uh, only the PhD and the learned can have. Chicken salad. <laughs> it's got to be something everybody can take. And it's, the Bible says he's easily entreated. He said right here. Where are we, Darren? Uh, 46. 40, 40, 40, 45. I'm going to repeat 45. And I will walk at liberty because I seek your precepts. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, if you read down through that whole thing, look at verse 49. He says, Remember your word unto your servant which you have caused me to hope. This is my comfort in my affliction. Why is it his comfort in it? Because it makes him feel better? No. Look at what he said. For your word has quickened me. It's made me alive. Amen, amen. It gave me something to fight with. Mm -hmm. My God, my God, my God. I can remember, I'm telling you, stuff is so real in my heart. I'm hitchhiking 25 miles from, the, from Middletown to the Neverly Hotel. Had to sleep in the staff quarters there three nights straight because I didn't have a car. The, the people running all over the place with the liquor and the drugs and everything. But you know what I'm doing the whole time? I'm quoting the word. I'm not letting this thing get out of my sight. He says, for you have quickened me. You strengthened, you comforted me. You know what that comfort is all about? 
That comfort is the peace that passes all understanding. God, God said, I got you, baby doll. I got you. And the more you put in your heart, as he continued to dump it in, he said, it quickened me. It made me alive. It made me stand up and want to fight back. And the more you load in there, the more manifestation you're going to see. Oh my God. Okay, now let's go to Matthew. I wish I was. We could stay here, but I was, what time do you got to go home? Anyway, let's go to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Because this is the base and foundation where we were. Because what we're talking about here now is not just some future sky, pie in the sky, by and by, and maybe it's going to work one day when God decides that you're ready for it and you have been good enough to earn it and you've crossed all your T's and dotted all your I's. No, no, no. He said this stuff. He said he was in trouble, and he's, his word comforted him, and his head, that word quickened him. Mm-hmm. Reminds me, uh, one day, Larry Holmes, the heavyweight champion, got quickened. <laughs> Man, this boy was beating him every way he could find. He couldn't find no way to hit this guy. This guy had him out on his feet. He's in the corner. He, he, this guy is hitting him with everything, with the kitchen sink, his grandma's kitchen sink, and his great-grandma's kitchen sink. Okay? And the water that came with the sink. <laughs> All of a sudden, he's just about to go down, but something quickened Larry Holmes that night. I don't know what it was. He brought up one uppercut. Boom! And the guy was, he didn't know what state he was in. His feet were searching for the floor. Wow. wow. And he won that fight and kept the heavyweight championship. Wow. And everybody said, if he didn't bring up that one uppercut, the guy was not expecting it. But that's what he's talking about here when he said, your word comforted me and it's quickened me. It can look like you out of it. <laughs> it looked like you ain't got a, a, a pot to cook in. <laughs> you on your last pig knuckle. <laughs> okay? <laughs> and then God turned it into a brass knuckle. Okay? <laughs> but if you feed that word on the inside, Amen. Ain't no way in the world you're going to lose. Amen. That's the truth. It's going to look like it. But that's the devil's job to make it look like it. That's true. I remember making a statement by the Holy Ghost at RLCC when I worked there. And it just came out. And the guy said, say that again. And he wrote it down. The statement I made was, if it didn't look impossible, how would you know it was a miracle? How would you know? Anybody can do that. That ain't no miracle. Or anybody can receive. No, no, it has to look impossible first. That's why God parted the Red Sea and they walked across on dry land. They didn't walk across and dry their socks off and squeeze out the, the squeeze them out full of water. They walked across and beat off the dust. Mm-hmm. They walked when he brought water out of the rock. It wasn't just an ordinary rock. It said it was the flinty rock. <laughs> Fire was in that dude. Okay? See, so if it, ain't, if it ain't got ugly enough, it's too easy for God. He said, but your word has quickened me. In other words, that's how you get me to start doing it. When you start seeking me. That's how you get me on your case. When you get to the point where you put enough faith in your heart that it will be something that's impossible. We look back over the last year, what he did was impossible, what he did for us. But keep stuffing the faith in your heart, and you will see the impossible. That's what he wants to do. Because you know why, you know why, you know why he wants to do it that way? Let me, let me explain why he wants to do it that way. He wants to do it that way, so you will always have your operation that way. Because everything he does and everything he does in this ministry is going to be impossible. Alright, I need to repeat that. As long as y'all here and see what God gets ready to do and as all you see him do it will be impossible. There ain't no way in the world we are paying for that room every week for the last two years with the small amount of people we got. Every week the money come out and more money is there. Things change, people leave, it's still there. Because he told me to go there. Every time I turn around. You know what? Between you and I, you know what we paid for that room last year? $7,200. That's what we paid last year. But it's there. Every time you turn around, the money's there. And it's going to be there as long as he wants us to be. I don't worry about it. I lose zero sleep. 
I just write the check and pay the bills. That's all I did. Okay, the website's going up. Just paid 165 on that for the hosting fee and for uh, the song for Vashon Mitchell, Mitchell. By the way, that's together. So we got the rights to the song for six months for that. That's going to go with the Highland Rehabilitation Nursing Center and over to the uh, soup kitchen. It's going to be on their website. They're going to see the commercials and stuff like that. Okay, all paid for. Every 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 month the 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 the, the internet we need to, to to load the songs and things. It paid in full every every month. But we have to do what we're sharing with you now. We got to keep seeking, and that's why the Lord has us on this. Because see now, here's the deal. Because God has put this thing in place, and as we begin to seek Him, as we begin to do what He says, that's what triggers the manifestation. Mm-hmm. All right now. That's what triggers the manifestation. It's just not here we hold in a Bible study to find out the truths God has. We're triggering this thing every time we come together. Didn't it say in the book of Mark that he confirmed the word with signs following? Every time he brings us together, we proclaim his word. Look out, here comes the manifestation. Amen. This is not just something laid on our hearts to learn. He laid on our hearts to learn so he can manifest. And we're supposed to take that and keep that pattern throughout our life. And everybody in the congregation is supposed to be following that and watching God move in a mighty way. If there's anything you lost, don't sit around too long because if you're digging this, it's coming back. (laughs) Don't know. Whoever had it, boy, don't get used to it. Because it's coming back, you're going to give it up. Mm-hmm. It's going to be like a red hot potato. You're going to have to drop it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. Because otherwise, the word of God ain't so. And we know, if the word of God ain't so, we all disappear. You know that, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> if the word of God ain't so, when it said light be in the morning, there ain't going to be no light if the word of God ain't so. Mm-hmm. But every 60, part of 64, almost 65 years, now that dude's been coming up on time. <laughs> okay, and guess what? It never really goes down because there's dark over here, light over there. So weep over that devil. <laughs> okay, so look, look, we're in Matthew chapter 6. Look at verse 25. So therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What you shall eat, or what, let's go to 24, I'm sorry, let's go to 24. Let's get the context in which the scripture shall be extrapolated. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> All right? So, no, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, else he would hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You can't serve God and be looking to the circumstances for your, to meet your needs. God said, I'm not going to co-mingle those two Spheres of influence, if you will. I ain't going to let you give the natural credit for what I do. All right now. He said, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, and yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto a statue? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying... What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. He's not just talking about the long range, he's talking about the short range too. He says, if you seek first the kingdom of God, the process will begin for these things. The found work, the foundation will be laid for these things to come. He said, all these things shall be added unto you. 
Well, now, last time I looked, they, when they made a car, they had to make the chassis. They had to put the wheels on there. They had to put the mounting blocks for the engine. They had to put the engine in there to begin to build a body. They began to put the wiring in the car for all the electronics and stuff like that. The process begins when you start seeking the kingdom of God. That's what people and a lot of ministries don't understand. Pat, bro, Brother Jake says something I've never been able to improve on. He said some people are frustrated because they don't understand process. Whoa, that backed me up. I've been living most of my Christian life not thinking about process. He says, if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added to you. Now, if you have them not added to you, what do you do? Stop seeking? If you're hungry and you lift your fork one time and you ain't full, do you stop eating? <laughs> you can be a skinny so-and-so. <laughs> you might not be around too long. He says, in other words, I, if what we desire in ministry, in life, in our families, in everything, it has to be a continual seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness all your Christian life. You can't start off in a blaze of glory and quit. The process quits. Do you know God designed it that way? He said, my, your work, he says, Give us this day our daily bread. It's a daily process. Like he walked and talked with Adam in the cool of the day. Man, he was out there every day. He wants nothing apart from you. He wants all of you. He has ways of letting situation and circumstance come where he get all your attention. Because he's big enough to replace all that and a whole, a whole lot much more and say, I'm, sorry, I'm glad this is gone, God. And it'd be, oh my God, look at, but he said, seek ye first. He's talking about the process of where he's beginning to clothe you greater than the lily that was clothed greater than Solomon. But we get a little bit, we stop. We get a little bit, we stop. Uh-uh, that ain't the way I play no more. Mm -hmm. I change my rules. Yes. I'm seeking him like this all the time now. Mm -hmm. All the time. So the process can never be hindered. The process can never be stopped. Yes. So now, as we said on Sunday, there is something here that Jesus began to establish that was already in place. Did you realize he said very little in the New Testament that, he did, that wasn't already in the Old Testament? All he did was bring it to light and give them revelation of what was going on. That's all he did. That's all he did. Let's, and, and I'll prove that in a few, few verses here. Let's go back to where we were in Proverbs. Uh, in Proverbs. I'm sorry? Proverbs 119. No, no. That was Psalms. Proverbs chapter 4. It's okay. Proverbs chapter 4. Because he said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. We heard that thing so many times. It's amazing. But guess what we're going to do tonight? We're going to find out how to do that. We're going to find out how to do it. And so it will start to work for us. Okay? It will start to work for us. Proverbs chapter 4. Let's look at verse 20. It says, My son, attend to my words. Incline your ear unto my sayings. Does this sound like a suggestion? Does this sound like something that says, well, if you feel like doing this, y'all go ahead and try it and see if it works. He said, my son, attend to my words. Incline my, your ear into my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. He says, it'll bring life to you. You notice he separated life from healing? You think that healing, he would, that's what he's talking about, healing, and then he said life, but he's saying something different. He's saying that it will bring life to those that whatever pertains to life, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. 
faith in three places, the word of God in three places, in your eyes, in your ears, and in your heart. He says it's going to add life to you. Whatever it is you need in life. He says, what, he's not saying anything different Jesus just said. He said, it, 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 that, he said that he would, they are life to those that find them. Jesus said, all these things will be added unto you. Excuse me, that's the same statement. Whatever it is, the book of Peter said it a different way. He said, all things are given unto us. All, for, all, for he has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him that called us to glory and virtue. He said, this book and this word is your life. You've got to ingest it. The more you ingest it and the more you commit to the process of ingesting, the more you ignore the circumstances, the more you ignore the, the pressures and the emotions that come with what's going on, the more life you're going to add. And all of a sudden, it's going to overwhelm the natural circumstance and get every one of your needs met. Look at what it says in verse 23. It says, keep your heart with all diligence. Keep that word in your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues or the forces of life. When you begin to put that word in your heart, those life forces begin to flow. And all these things will be added unto you. And then in the kicker, he says, you're going to be it's health to all your flesh. As it flows through you, getting your needs met, it heals you on the way out. But you got to have a continuous flow. Do you understand now why this, this church is so insistent from day one? Get up early and read your Bible. I've been saying that for two and a half years now. I be, and I can't back off of it. But we're coming into the depths of what it really means now. We're coming into how important this thing really is. Oh, we're going to have a good time now. Let's go over to the 22nd chapter of Matthew. Matthew 22. Because we, we, we're finally getting to the point for, those, for the faithful ones now. Not for the, bla the people that didn't see anything happening. And, oh yeah, it sounds good, but I don't see no results. And uh, you know, how many people know God ain't in a hurry? I'd rather have something sure than something fast. <laughs> I, if I'm going to get it, and somebody said, well, you got $12 million. And, then you, and t tomorrow, tomorrow you say, I don't see no $12 million. But you know the integrity of the person that promised it, and you don't budge. And it starts to rain, it starts to snow, it starts to sleet, it starts to be next year, it starts to be 10 years from now. I said, well, I can't make $12 million in 10 years. Might as well sit here now, I've been here that long. That's got to be your attitude. As you feed on the Word, that's got to be your attitude. Amen. Because that's what the, those are the ones that are going to win. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that are going to win. Look at uh, Matthew chapter 22. And let's look at verse 29 to because we're going to shoot this thing right today. Word of God in three places, your eyes, your ears, and in your heart. Look at, look at verse 29, 22, 29, Matthew 22, 29. Do you not therefore, and it was talking about these Pharisees and the scribes who didn't believe in the resurrection. He said, Jesus answered said unto them, do you, you do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection, he didn't say there was a resurrection. He said, for in the resurrection. You should already know this, he said. They didn't marry nor given in marriage, but as the angels of God in heaven. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have you not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob? God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Look what he's saying in verse 31. But as touching the resurrection, have you not read that which was spoken unto you by God? Well, wait a minute. I thought Moses was on the mountain. I thought Moses was the one that God said, I am the God of Isaac. I am the God of Jacob. I am uh, he's a, a God of Abraham. I, I thought he said that to Moses. Jesus Christ, the living word himself, said to the Sadducees, Have you not read that which was spoken unto you by God? Come on, now. see, that's what changed me. That's the part 
It changed me. I couldn't get enough of it on Sunday. He spoke down through the eons and, and the chasms of time. He said that I'm only talking to Moses. I'm talking to you. The Sadducees and the people right here in 2019. This Bible is God speaking to you. He says, attend to my words. Keep them in before your eyes. Keep them in your ears. Put them in your heart. Because why is God talking to you? Amen. It. And it's going to be life to your flesh, healing to your flesh, and life to your circumstances. It's going to be everything to you. Yes. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You've got to have this stuff in your heart, in your ears, and in your eyes. Yes, amen. Don't just listen to it. Follow along in the book. Have it preeminate and, 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 and circumvent and overwhelm everything else that's in your spirit till it's more true than anything else. When you get to that point, mm -hmm. man, the kingdom of God is adding everything to you. Yes, amen. Because that life force out of your heart flow the issues of life. Yes, amen. All of a sudden, I don't know, I forgot about that money I owe you. Hey, have you heard about this good deal over there with that car? Man, I, I don't need this car. Here, you take it. Well, this house over there is dirt cheap. They're they getting ready to break up. They're they, they, they giving it to you for half or nothing. Amen. Stuff would be... He says, these things will be added to you. Amen. Now, you see, when you begin to understand that it's God talking to you out of the Word, mm -hmm. this is what makes faith easy. And I was looking to get to this point. When you understand that it's God talking to you, how many things has God said that didn't come to pass? Like be, like was. Let the earth bring forth, the earth brought forth. He breathed into, into man's nostril the breath of life. Man became a living soul. Everything he breathed and everything he spoke came to pass. When you put that thing in your heart and that word in your eyes, and in your ears is designed, destined, and it is impossible for it not to come to pass. Amen. My word. That's what I'm talking about. That's what changed my hair color on Sunday. Okay? <laughs> I'm telling you, it just looked like it's the same color to y'all. But on the inside, that dude got changed. The glory of God began to flow through. When I heard, I said, what? God was speaking to me, and when God speaks, everything obeys God. This book is speaking to me, the living power, the living God. Man, I'm going to eat it all up. I'm going to put it in my spirit. If the devil will react to the sword of the spirit, don't you think there's some power somewhere in this thing? So if you put it in your spirit, if you begin to put it in your eyes and follow the direction, put it in your ears and put it in your heart and begin to get to the point where that life force. I remember when it was that hard walking and hitchhiking from the Montessori to, to the Neville. And I remember getting so hard and so rough and I'm hitchhiking. And, but the word of God had been three months in the word, three months, 18 hours a day. Sleep in six hours, get back up and get back into my tapes, get back and read the word, get back in taking communion. And that's why I got in the economic position I was in, but I didn't care. The word was just that, just that real to me. And I remember walking down the road and begin, and everything was so dark and the, the rent was $1,000. I feel like they're about to throw me out and things are so bad. I just got this one job. And all of a sudden I began to say, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, come unto him saying, Master, what will, we will that thou shouldest do for us whatsoever we desire. And Jesus said unto them, uh, what thing, what would you that I should do for you? They said that we may sit one in your right hand and the other in your left hand in your glory. And Jesus said, you know not what you ask. Can you drink of the cup that I drink of and be baptized in baptism? By the baptized? They said, we can. He said, you shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of and be baptized in the baptism, baptism of baptized. But so shall it not be among you. Whosoever should be the chiefest. No, he says, but the left and the right are not mine to give. But it shall be given unto them for whom it shall be. It is prepared. You know why I did that? Because I can remember. I had put so much of the word of God in my heart 
that that's what I quoted. As I'm going through that hard time, I'm continuing to quote the word. It was in my ears. It was in my eyes. It was in my heart. And that's what was coming out. When I finally got to the Neville, somebody giving me a ride, I finally got to the Neville. You know what the Lord spoke to my heart? You see, I had the word in there. And I was walking by faith. So all of a sudden, he starts to say, okay, now I can talk to you. He said, i never forget this. This is from 1985, 86. As a matter of fact, it was around February of 1986. He said to me, when you are the most discouraged and you have the mo most weight on you, he says, if you quote the word then, you can't miss the devil because he's right in front of you. Who else is bringing a discouragement? Who else is bringing a despondency? Who else is tell telling you this stuff ain't going to work? When he knows it will work. He says, if you don't quote the word right then, you can't miss him. You'll split him in half. Man, I begin to quote that thing and I begin to come out. I begin to get, I got myself a Sony Walkman. Begin to hear Copeland tapes and stuff like that. You remember those cassette tapes? I had a, man, I have, I, every time, I, I was like Lucas McCain, I'd load up, load up. Every time, in between breakfast and lunch, I'm way back in the back and just listen to tape after tape after tape after tape. Mm -hmm. And then when I got to the point, I got tired of hitchhiking, I went on a three day fast. Nothing to drink and nothing to eat. I was radical in those days. I don't recommend it. Just drink some water. But I wouldn't eat and I wouldn't drink for three days. I, I need a car of God and I need it now. <laughs> Broke the fast after three days. Sure enough, I, as I was riding by, I saw this car for sale for $225. It was the same car he showed me about a week before that. <laughs> I did a three-day fast for nothing. I said, man, where my sausage? <laughs> You know, but I got the car, and I mean, you weren't much of a car. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, the, the, the spark plug wires burned out. So, so I, I was at Woodburn, uh, Woodburn uh, Full Gospel Assembly of God Church at the time, and the pastor asked me to preach Sunday night. And I get in the car, I'm happy, I'm, I'm turning the thing on, and all of a sudden, poof, the wires caught on fire. I said, oh my God, I'm getting, and I got it, I'm, I'm doing church in another 15, 20 minutes. So I go in the house, I get an extension cord. And I shave off the, 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 the wire, to, to the wire, and bring it from the distributor cap to the, each spark plug. Mm -hmm. I drove to church with some, with some household uh, extension cord wires on my car. Mm -hmm. But nobody told me they don't last too long, because there's too much fire going, and they don't last. But I made it to church. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think I had to rewire it to get back home, or some crazy stuff like that. But next time, I got another car that was beat up. Next car, I got another one cut and beat up. By the third or fourth car, I'm driving a brand new Chrysler Fifth Avenue off the showroom floor. Mm. I never stop. You see what I'm saying? It's all about process putting the word of God in your heart. Mm. He says, if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added unto you. You got to keep stuffing that dude in your heart all the time. Your spirit man will get to the point where it's used to it, where he don't like to be without it. Yeah, You've got to have a diligent process with this stuff. He says, you keep it in your eyes, you keep it in your ears, you keep it in your heart because the issues of the forces of life is coming out of that heart. That's what's causing the manifestation. That's what's causing the manifestation. Okay, we're right here in uh, Matthew chapter 22. And um, there's another, another place where Jesus was talking to the scribes and the Pharisees. And he was having a conversation with them about this very thing. He said, at least they should see with their eyes and understand with their heart. And that is in Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. Is it 18, Lord? Okay, I'm sorry. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew 6. This better be the right one now. Matthew 6. 
It's not there. It's not there. Jesus talked to the to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And he talked about when uh, he says, um, I gotta find this for you. I gotta find this for you. And should understand with our heart, and I should heal them. Okay, there it is. Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. That's the one. That was there Sunday. Matthew chapter 13. And it's time, let's look, um, look at verse 11. He says, And he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you, they know the mystery of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. And whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore I speak unto them in parables, because they, they seeing, see not. And hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing you shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see and not perceive. Now you watch what he's saying now. For this people's heart is wax gross, that the ears are dull of hearing, the eyes they have closed, least they should understand should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Right out of where we just got finished saying in the book of Proverbs. Attend to, to my words. Incline thine ear into my saints. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of their heart. They were commanded by God to do this, but Jesus said, He says, they, they close their eyes, they're dull of hearing, and any time, at least any time they see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and be converted. Once they converted, Healing is instant. It's automatic. I got to do it. Because my word said they qualified for it. You see, he not only the righteous, but the Pharisees and the scribes were commanded to do the same thing. Have it in their eyes. Have it in their ears. Have it in their heart. When you do that, it is the forces of life come out. Healing comes out. Your needs get met. Because God has spoken for you to do that and the power is there to cause it to come to pass when you do it. Amen. When he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Baby, that's not a suggestion. The power went forth to cause it to happen when you do it. That's what changed my life. That's what changed. That because Jesus put the power in this thing to make it happen when I do it. Not only that, you can never tell me it's not the will of God because there's power is there to bring it to pass. When you seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, Amen. he's backing it up with himself yes. and with his spoken word. And he says, I watch over my word to perform it. Okay, they're seeking. You okay, word? get to them everything I said was coming. The more they keep seeking, the more they have it. King Hezekiah, or Isaiah, is said in the Old Testament, he says, as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. Yes, amen. The power was there to get it done. Jesus was already, had released the power. He's bearing witness and adding power to the fact that when you seek, his power is there to cause it to pass. I'm going to close in Joshua chapter 1. Most everybody knows know where I'm going. But I love doing this because it releases the power for it to come to pass. That's why I love doing it. It releases the power for it to come to pass. Y'all are going to hear a lot of this because it causes the church to get up and run. It causes the needs to be met of the people. It causes... Every, us to have everything that we need when it's in our eyes and our ears and in our heart so every time we come together and the anointing is present for this thing to come to pass we read this and we're in, in agreement over it, stuff is going to come to pass and going to be added to you Amen. and the 
it gets greater and greater every time we do it. Look at Joshua chapter 1. Look at verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. If you meditate in it day and night, it shall not depart out of your mouth. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate there, and you're looking at it, that thou mayest observe, that you may look at it, to do according to all that is what written therein. So it's in your eyes, it's in your mouth, in your ears, and in your heart. It's in your eyes, your ears, and your heart. You don't have to worry about saying it. You know why? Out of the abundance of the heart. It didn't say out of a little bit of the heart. It said when it's in there in abundance. Yes, amen. That's it. Force of faith. Come on now. The forces of life. Seek first the kingdom of God. His righteousness, His righteousness includes whatever abundance you want. The abundance should be in your heart. The Holy Ghost, one year ago, March 1st, gave an assignment to the church. Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14, every day. My wife and I do it every day. We put it in our hearts. Three times after our devotion, we read, some, uh, read Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. There was one day, I think I read it 72 times. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but guess what? All the bills got paid. <laughs> All right, all the needs got met. I went in and told him, I said, well, you know what? I don't need to be here no more. They said, no, 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 no. You, you got to, how, how about, we give you any shift you want. I said, okay, how about three days a week? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and they took it. But, and, and it's going to get even better. It's going to get even brighter. Amen. Okay. You put the, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And put your, his word in your heart in abundance in your eyes and your ears and in your heart. He's already released the power for that thing to come to pass. It's out there waiting for us. Every need is already met according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Seeking the kingdom of God by faith. The power is right there to meet every need you're ever going to have for 8 billion lifetimes. My God, let's close in prayer. Father God in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you for your word. Your word that lives and abides forever, God. We thank you, Lord, for your steadfast, immovable faithfulness. We thank you for your word that lives and abides forever. Continue, Lord, to cause the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you to be manifested. As we read your word, hear your word, teach your word, live your word, meditate your word, Lord God. Father, give us a hunger and a desire for your word and the things of you and fill us to overflowing. As your word said, they that are hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. We see your word as a reality, God. Waiting for us to do what you say to do and you'll manifest your power that's already at work. We thank you for tonight, God. It's changed us. We will do according to your word. We will learn and do mighty exploits in the name of Jesus. Fill us with your joy unspeakable and full of glory and a peace that passes all understanding. I speak peace over every home represented here. I cover each and every one in the blood of Jesus. Dispatch your warring angels to do battle against every demonic force that would come against them in any way. We thank you that your angels, a minister in spirit, sent forth to minister for those that shall be heirs unto salvation. We praise and thank you that we are the redeemed of the Lord. We praise and thank you we can and do say so. In Jesus' name, amen.